Welcome to FWC Tactical Knowledge, where the analysis of football is raw and detailed. Please remember to like and subscribe. Good day, welcome to Future World Class TV. And today we'll be analyzing the next World Cup match between Argentina and Mexico. Now Argentina put on a fantastic performance, goal scoring by Enzo and also Messi. Now, before we go into the deep analysis, I'd first go through the system that each team plays starting first with Argentina. Argentina started in a well, they played attacking structure 3 2 5 and also a 2 3 5 at times. The defensive structure was of a 5 2 3 at times and also a 5 3 2. With Mexico structures, attacking wise, they tried to play a 3 4 3 because, to be honest, most of the times they didn't have the ball. But I saw the shape that they were trying to do, which was a 3 4 3 in attack. And they also played a 5 3 2 in defense. Now, starting with the analysis of the Argentina attacking structure and defensive structure, starting first with the attacking structure. Now, as I said before, they start, they played with a 3 2 5 and also a 2 3 5 at times attacking structure. And we're going through the 3 2 5 attacking structure system. Now, with this system, you have the central centre back who is deepest with the ball once they have the ball. And you had the wide centre backs who gave supporting angles beside the deeper centre back. You had the deep line playmaker, which is here, who generally gave support within the middle, who was would normally drop off to give support. Going into spaces like here or here sometimes, or even dropping back to give there. Or around here. He would normally be the first player to give that support to Argentina, the deep line playmaker. Now the box to box midfielder who was more up in the space but also in the I would call it the half space in within the middle. And this created a diagonal shape between the deep line playmaker and box to box midfielder of the Argentina side. Within the half space you had the Argentina players and their job was mainly to give support within the half space as you can see so they normally drop off within this region and they normally stay between the center back and the full back on the opposing side because it was a five man defense within the middle within um mexico's side if mexico is defending in a four man defense They'd have to stay beside the fullback I give an angle beside the fullback. Now you had the players out wide who gave width to the team and you had the striker who played as a false nine mostly. Now Argentina defensive shape, they used a high press. They used a mid block and also a low block within the game. But they used different um, structures when they were playing in a high press, supposed to a mid block and a low block. They used the same formation when playing in a mid block and a low block. I mean, same structure. Now, the high press structure was of a 5 2 3, which they would put support onto the three center box. two midfielders and also create pressure for the five in attack for the Mexican team. Now Argentina when in a high press they use a what is called a man-to-man -man marking and this I'd say is a very smart move due to the fact that Mexico was a good attacking side and the structure that they were using would create damage basically on the width more on the width because they used wing box so the fact that they used a man-to-man -man marking they stopped they had a man for each player once Mexico was, was in its attack and I believe that was one of the consequences of why Mexico bailed out the ball because 
when any, when when there was any chance for them to get the ball, there would be an Argentina person that was there to stop them. Now, when they were in a mid block, they used a uh, five three two instead of a five two three. In my opinion, a 5-2-3 is a very, very great defensive formation and that's due to the fact that it's compact in all areas. It's compact at the back, which you have five persons at the back, it's compact within the middle because the middle can, can be unnumbered unless they're using a diamond midfield, which will consist of four players. And it consists of two strikers instead of one. Central strikers that are there to create that support. Now with Mexico attacking shape and defensive shape, honestly they weren't able to carry out the role they really wanted to do with the attacking shape due to the fact they barely had possession with the ball. But say for example if Mexico did have a lot of possession with the ball, this would be their shape because they were using a 3-4-3 attacking structure and also they used a 5-3-2 in defense but we start with the attacking structure. Now, they are the three centre backs. They are the wing backs. Out and width, who was responsible for giving width. And they had to be extremely fit. They are the deep line playmaker within the middle. Or you would say the central defender, who was the person who would connect from defence to attack and be the first to give support to the attacking midfielders. I mean, give support to the centre backs. And they are the Box to box midfielder would stay generally within the half space but also create that um, work from attack to defense and this will create a diagonal angle within the midfield. You had the wide forwards. You had the three forwards, which are the wide forward, which consisted of the wide forward and the central striker. Now The wide forwards would stay between the centre back and the left back, or the centre back and the right back, depending on the side. And they would drop into spaces to create that support within the half space. And the central striker would play either as a false nine or play as a target man. Which are the target man is a striker that holds up the ball and brings his players into play. You have the wingers or wing backs who were there to facilitate in giving width and also giving 1v1s, giving crosses, etc. Now, onto the defensive shape which Mexico basically mastered due to the fact that they were in a lot of they, they barely had the ball so hence they had to play more defensively and they used this formation within the high press the mid block and also the low block Yes, now within the high press, they put pressure onto the centre box. Should be so due to the fact they don't have any, they don't have three forwards pressing. They use two, and they press mainly the central striker or the space.
between the central central center back. You have the three midfielders we give compact within the middle and put high press within the middle and you have the players all marking the five attackers of the Argentina side. Now when they were playing a low block they would come back more and they would come more compact within the middle. I mean when playing a mid block, sorry. Come more compact within the middle. And this is necessary for them not to be penetrated within the middle. And I stated before that five, the 5 2 3 is an excellent defensive formation. And when it was a low block, this is when the team is in high press of the opponent's team, opposite team. So they'd have to basically part the bus to stop any attack from happening to create a goal scoring opportunity. And this is how the low block would look like. And this is when Argentina was very much in their half. Future Reclass TV End of the analysis Argentina vs Mexico And look out for a lot more Yeah, this is the play of the Argentina and the Mexico World Cup match. This will be the second World Cup analyst match on the Future Class TV. And it was a wonderful match by Argentina. Well played, 2-0. And goals scored by Messi and Enzo. They played a wonderful game. The team played a wonderful game. They were very organized. And they executed what needed to be done. Oh, I'm out.